one of the films that is also out today. Alan, did you see Bodies, Bodies, Bodies? No. Nope. Almost oh, you didn't did, see it. but Oh almost. good. Well, I am gonna save you time and money. This is one of the worst films of the year. Okay. And I've spoken spoken uh, spoken to a friend who said you can't really give that movie a bad review because you know, woman writer director. I don't care. I don't care. My standards, my standards goes for everybody. I don't care. You're all you're all equal here. Merit-based reviews here at Film Threat. I'll only give only I only give a little leeway when it comes to smaller indie movies. Okay. I, I do. I'll admit bias for that. But Bodies, Bodies, Bodies is a bunch of rich assholes who go to um, spend time at their mansion. They're all trust fund kids. So they're already the most unlikable characters you could all possibly meet. All rich kids. They're staying at Pete Davidson's dad's mansion during a hurricane for fun to kind of just hang out and drink and do drugs. They do cocaine. They do all sorts of drugs and whatever. And uh, it starts out with a couple. Um, uh, there's a, a lesbian couple at the beginning and it's just sort of gratuitous making out. And, and uh, it, it just, it's, it's, it's sort of, I, I don't know. I, I just thought it was, it just went on a little too long. It was sort of like, Oh, you're you're you don't like this, right? We're just gonna keep showing it to you. So this is like incredibly gratuitous makeout scene at the beginning, and it's it's not hot at all. Let me just say that it's not hot in the least. And it stars uh uh Pete Davidson, Lee Pace, uh other people I've never heard of, and the girl from Borat. So there you go. I Alan will correct me on the cast. The least you can contribute to this review, Alan, <laughs> is telling me who are the actors other than Pete Davidson and Lee Pace. I know, you were there, I mean. <laughs> In any case, after this extended makeout scene, um, they go to the pool and they're drinking and there's some confusion about, you can't really bring guests to this, whatever, and they're doing drugs and they're just, there's not a likable character in this movie, with the exception of maybe Lee Pace, who's kind of this stoner guy that was like a Tinder hookup. This girl's kind of known this guy for just a couple weeks, uh, which is not, you shouldn't, you've only known this guy a couple weeks. Why'd you bring him? And he's sort of a hippie dude. But um, what's funny is people are going to ask, it's, it's, this movie wants to be a horror movie. It's not really a horror movie. Um, there's a horror element to it. And if you want, I can ruin the movie for you. This is basically, we're going to get to it. At the very end, I'm going to ask, okay? At the, at the, this movie is basically a short film, kind of a clever short film that got extended out into a feature and it's freaking insufferable. It's insufferable. I mean, it's like 90 minutes and feels like two and a half hours. What's interesting about it is, your question is, is the movie woke, right? Based on the characters. Here's what's interesting about it. There's wokeness in the movie, but you're laughing at it. Like one of the characters says, uh, regarding Lee Pace's character, says, oh, uh, like, who is this guy? He's an asshole, blah, 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 blah. And then they check his social media feed. And they're like, okay, his politics check out. Like he's cool because he's down with politics. That got a laugh. These are like, this is like a Gen Z horror movie. And they're just as insufferable as you think all of spending time with a bunch of woke Gen Z people would be. They're annoying as fuck. But not just that, it's they're all rich. So all of them, they're talking about their money. And one of the, like the insults is, you're not rich, you're upper middle class. So that gets a laugh. There's all sorts of like um, jokes that, I, I, they're not jokes. What they're doing is they're just speaking up like how, I guess, woke people would try to outwoke each other. And that becomes funny because we all realize how stupid that is. Is it entertaining? No, it's fucking insufferable. So uh, what happens is this is not, I, I mean, I could get into spoilers, but I want to see if people want to hear spoilers. I'll just say that this was freaking insufferable. Worst film I've seen this year. Worst film that A24 has ever released. <laughs> Worst film A24 has ever released. My feeling is the only reason this movie was released was because of Pete Davidson being in the movie. Thankfully, he's not in the movie long. Read into that what you will. 
but it's, I, I just feel like this movie was doing a favor for some director that is also comes from money. I see this a lot. Okay. So I was going to the Sundance, we go to the Sundance film festival since the nineties. I no longer go there, but naively when I was, when I was younger going to the Sundance film festival, in the nineties, I'm like, wow, all these filmmakers, it's so inspiring. They charged their credit cards. They worked hard and they, they, they made their little indie movies. They like Kevin Smith, who sold his comic book collection and put money on credit cards to finish clerks. I, and, and who came from, you know, middle-class Kevin Smith, true middle-class dude, you know, worked his ass off, went to film school, made friends there, sold his comic book collection, put, put money on credit cards and he made clerks and it went to Sundance and it sold to Harvey Weinstein with a, a, a contract written on a cocktail napkin. That's a true story. And you can you can see a documentary about all of that called the Snowball Effect. Check that out. So I naively go to Sundance thinking everybody's like Kevin Smith. Everybody's a Kevin Smith or someone who struggled or someone like a Sarah Jacobson, a, a, a filmmaker who made a movie called I Was a Teenage Serial Killer, uh, among others, like who just worked and made it. But I come to find out years later that like, nah, it's just all rich kids. 90% plus of everyone at Sundance are elites and rich kids who are doing favors for each other. That's what Sundance is. That's what it is. And there is the occasional sneaking through like an Eduardo Sanchez and Daniel Myrick who did the movie, The Blair Witch Project, which played uh, the midnight show at the Egyptian theater. And, you know, so you'll see an occasional filmmaker squeak through who's just a struggling middle class or lower middle class person who just freaking did it. But most of it is rich kids. And they're just as fucking annoying as you would see in a John Hughes movie. That's what this is, is all the, un imagine all the unlikable rich kid characters from a John Hughes film in a movie. You want them all to die. So I fucking hated this movie because the characters are so unlikable. It's, it's, I cannot recommend that you see, I, I can't, you need to just avoid this movie at all costs. And I, I would have like, yeah, thank you, Retro Nerd Girl. Preach, Chris. It's just insufferable. Uh, it does have one of the actresses I really like. What's her name? She's from a movie, a movie that's very good called Shiva Baby. Uh, Rachel. Re recommendation. Sinner. Recommendation for you. See a movie called Shiva Baby, also female director, by the way, which is a great film. It's a it's an incredibly uncomfortable comedy about uh, a young girl who is having an affair and goes to a Shiva and then runs into the man she's having an affair with, with his wife and young daughter and has to kind of get through the Shiva with this fact kind of rolling in her head. And the movie's like 80 minutes and it's freaking great really great film and the lead actress of shiva baby baby what's her name alan rachel senate rachel senate phenomenal she's really she's actually to me the best part of this uh she's the least annoying of those characters of these characters but if you want to see a movie where the characters are incredibly unlikable like horribly unlikable wait i might have to show a video here i gotta show a video this is this is me ranting about a movie I have this video somewhere. Where's this video? I may have to change the branding here just for a second, just for a second. If I can find this. Yeah. L listen, this is a rant I did in a movie I freaking hated. I hated bodies, bodies, bodies more than this movie. They say, write what you know. And this person obviously just is person. Soup person. The well, there's like five writers. writers yeah, they are like really on their fucking phones a lot, they which is why this <laughs> generation of writers fucking sucks They're, balls. They were they knew just, Pure Isle games. Angry, what? I'm angry, and, what? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, they, and I just, know, I know, I know that they did a lot of meetings and a lot of energy went into this and everyone should be fucking ashamed who worked on this film. You could have actually done something that matters. There's no reason for you to have made this movie. You wasted so much 
fucking time. And fire. no, I'm angry because this is this is what we get now. And I know how the, the, the just it's such bullshit. And the fact that like everything, looking at the computer, we're doing this. We're looking at our cell phones in the out the movie. It was ridiculous, which is why that got the biggest laugh. It's because it called out the movie for being as shitty as it was. Yeah. You know, I their fucking faces. hate this film. But if you don't, Norm, you're gonna review it right on the side. Yeah. Don't try to duck. Yeah. You, I, you, if, if you give it more than a zero, more than a zero, I just need to tank on fucking Rocky. No, this is definitely one of the worst films I've seen this year. So <laughs> that was, I was talking, dare, this was in 2018 from a podcast we did, and uh, we t- we were talking about the movie Truth or Dare. So bodies, bodies, bodies is worse than this worse than this and i will say this there is one clever thing in the movie that i genuine laugh for me it's the very end of the movie and i want to spoil it but only only if the chat wants me to spoil the movie i will spoil the ending of this movie only if you say that you would like me to do so before before that let's get to the comments here actually let me ask you one question um I feel like the problem with Gen Z films these days is this. Uh, it's like a joke. Uh, it's all set up, but no punchline. And that somehow the the youth of the young generation feels like there's comedy in the setup and that the setup is funny, but there's no payoff to it. And I feel like maybe that, that's what I play here. There is a really, the payoff to the film I thought was really good, but it would be good if it was a short film. When I tell you what it is, it's going to make you fucking mad. I'm going to, okay. So a uh, Holy hand grenade says Chris talking truth. Jack D Ripper says Pete's death and suicide squad was great though. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there you go. Retro nerd girl. Always love to have you here. Bodies, bodies, bodies was insufferable, insufferable, insufferable is a quote from me. There you go. Thank you. Holy hand grenades. Hold up. He dies. I'm going to watch just for that scene. Uh, yes. Well, that is, I'm ruining it. He died. I mean, a lot of people die in this movie. Yeah. The way he does is very clever. Holy hand grenades. Well, no one is going to watch it. So just tell us. Akinika says Chris's use of the word insufferable. It's insufferable. <laughs> is irony there, yeah. Jinx, how is Pete Davison getting movies? He is never funny or good looking. How is he getting uh, girls for the. <laughs> do, yeah, there you go. Pete Davidson is in it. Pretty sure it's already ruined, says Syfax. Uh, Shelby AC, I already hate all these characters just from your description. Easy Tigers, another crap woke movie it's not i wouldn't say it's a woke movie i'd say it's a movie with people characters who are woke the movie does make fun of them being woke does that make sense so i wouldn't necessarily the movie say the movie is woke the characters in the movie are woke and the the biggest laughs in the movie come from people the woke characters trying to outwoke each other does that make sense? Flaccid Phoenix says, can't wait for the Allen remake of the movie Nipples, Nipples, Nipples. It's coming. Fla- uh, CD Stein 69 for 499. Chris, it's like your clip took my thoughts right out of my head, which could have be applied to most of these newer Gen Z movies. Uh, uh, Pop says, Bodies Cubed sounds like a hate watch gold. Yeah, it's definitely hate watch, but it's kind of boring. Um, Tumbleweeds, nobody's, nobody's, nobody's going to watch Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Love that. Uh, Munchkin says bodies, bodies, bodies says 96% critics and 86% audience score. What, what? are they missing? Uh, yeah, not for fucking me. I walked out of there and my friend, Eric Weber, by the way, does a show called midnight movie talk. Mostly he talks about box office subscribe to Eric Weber's YouTube channel, by the way, he's trying to get monetized and, um, he's trying to get monetized on, on YouTube and he's got, he's closing in on a thousand subscribers. So help him out. So uh, everyone wants me to spoil it. So I will, after I get through these comments, uh, I won't watch anything. T- uh, Pete Davidson says, Ken Bogus, uh, CD Stein 69. Am I the only one that the Joker was thought the Joker was meh as a study in mental illness. It was a good movie, but it felt like it was just riding the coattails of being a Batman character just to get people in the seats. That didn't bother me. That didn't bother me. It felt like um, the King of Comedy, which is a, uh, one of my favorite Martin mm-hmm. Scorsese movies that nobody remembers. And it had that aspect of it. Robert De Niro as Rupert. Uh, he, well, he, what's his No, that Rupert Pupkin. <laughs> Rupert Pupkin, I think is his name. I think so. Yeah. So Honestly, it, was, it, uh, real, Lewis, the, uh, ending, it was the ending monologue that kind of like, really? That's how we're ending. Okay. okay go. He says, let the bodies, bodies, bodies hit the floor. Okay. We're going to do it. 
last warning. No enthusiasm from me due to Lady Gaga, but I'll still give it a chance. That's Holy Hand Grades talking about yep. uh, Joker there. Okay, so we're done with the comments. Let's do this. We're, we're spoiling bodies, 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 okay? So if you want to, if you don't want to, oh, and then and then a sub to Eric Weber right here. Just go to Eric Weber edition. That's his, his show is Midnight Movie Talk. Let's get him up to a thousand subs because I want to see Eric get monetized so I can send him a super chat and force him to see RRR. All right, now, <laughs> warnings have been said. Everyone in the chat, I'm about to ruin the ending of Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. But here's the setup. So as you see in the trailer, they play a game called Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. What are the rules for this game? Uh, you reach in a hat. You know, they, they rip up pieces of paper. One of the pieces of paper has an X on it. And the X means that you're the murderer. So what they do is they turn off all the lights. And if you're the murderer, you have to go and tag somebody. If you are tagged, you are then murdered and you have to lay on the ground and play dead, right? So uh, they play. They start playing this game, bodies, bodies, bodies. Someone is the murderer, the lights go out. There's a body, but it's someone pretending to be dead. And, and, uh, and that's how the game is played. It's just a dumb, you know, it's a, it's a dumb party game when you're drunk, whatever. Well, as they're playing this game, you know, they can't find Pete Davidson's character. They look outside as they're playing this game and he's slit his throat. He's bleeding profusely, bleeding profusely and dying and falls dead. So there's a real murderer among them. And they spend the entire movie, there's distrust, there are accusations, they start like, to, other people get killed from trying to protect themselves. And uh, I, I skipped over something. What happened earlier in the movie is Lee Pace's character did this really cool thing where he took Pete Davidson's sword, he took his sword and took a champagne bottle and went boom and opened the champagne bottle. And it was like effortless for him. He's a cool guy. And Pete Davidson is sort of feels threatened by Lee Pace's character who's kind of this cool dude who's like taking this real sword he's popping open the champagne well there's all this mistrust uh, the whole movie they're like you know they don't know who the killer is whatever come to find out they find pete davidson's phone and they look at his phone and he was in the middle of making a tip a tiktok video where he's trying to use the sword to open the champagne and he takes the sword and starts going like this and he slits his own throat and dies so Pete Davidson's character died making a TikTok video. They find the video at the very end of the movie and realize there was no killer. It was just an accident. And all this sort of paranoia and mistrust came from them seeing his dead body, which was self-inflicted. So you just sold the movie. That's really, that's an interesting. And I love the, I, 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 there was like, that's the one redeemable thing in this movie is that like, oh, someone died making a stupid TikTok video. And also, people have died taking selfies. This is a thing. Um, the um, I don't know if you are familiar with a thing called the Darwin Awards, but you need to you need to need to just look up the Darwin Awards and its stupid ways that people have died. Really <laughs> dumb ways, like stupid ways. One of the, my favorite Darwin Awards is a guy. Normally, it's people die, but a guy actually physically took his testicles put them in a golf ball washer and it ripped his testicles off. Now, technically he didn't die, but he's incapable of procreating. So it was sort of an honorary Darwin award. Uh, but it's a, you think it's a funny premise, Patrick Lemire coming in. That's a funny premise. It is, it's clever, but getting yeah. there is so insufferable. And it feels like this would have made a better short film. It's not, it doesn't have the meat it doesn't have the meat for a for a feature is what i'm going to say rec films montana says okay kind of clever i thought it was clever mob 191901 pete's like sean bean in most of his movies but not missed <laughs> creed bratton did it says patrick lemire so there you go i look uh that's what happens at the end of the movie does it redeem the movie for me no i thought the movie was fucking awful um and one of the worst of the week of the year so uh i don't know what they attribute the audience score to i think a lot of that can be depending on who you send it to but yeah not a fan 